All right, where are we at here? Um, we are on, what, uh, episode number three of the bathroom remodeled. So, last time we looked at Wayne redid the manifold. Looking pretty good. He designed the sink. Operational plan here. All right, so we've gone from the single to the double. Reconfigured the toilet and the shower. All right, excavation work is done, and the plumbers have done their work. A couple hours ago, one of Christian's guys came by and backfilled the hole, added a whole bunch more dirt, and we've got about mm, four to six inches of concrete going here, sort of depending on where you're talking about, but you know, on average, it's probably five. Um, Wayne had uh, placed this piece of cardboard on the toilet uh, connection to maintain space so that uh, the toilet can be properly set without having to chisel out new concrete. So that's looking good. Um, this will probably be ready to walk in uh, tomorrow is what I understand. Uh, it's already dried up quite a bit. It was a little bit soupy there for a bit, but <clears throat> it's drying as we go. While I had time, I snuck in some insulation around the pecs in the shower. So Halloween's coming up in, what, seven weeks. Uh, we're in the second week of September now, and um, I'm on the hook to make a Halloween costume for a five-year-old. And what we're gonna be doing is we've got Mr. Slink from Toy Story here, so there's my reference photos. And I have an EVA foam head that I've put together with EVA foam. Um, these are just temporarily attached just so I can sort of start to get perspective and so forth and I think to an extent some of this will stay and some of it will go. So it's, you know, it's coming along all right. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I made a lot of mistakes, but um, I'm probably going to post the video. I did film what I did and what I've been doing, except for the mistakes, of course. All right, order airbrush paint. Let's take a look at what they sent. Uh, Badger opaque paint. That's cool. I've got more foam. I needed that. I'm not sure how much of the Halloween costume will actually continue to form. Definitely the head, but uh, um, we've got a five-year-old and we've got a, a two-year-old who's going to be the opposing parts of Slink, right? So still yet to be designed uh, and, and assembled and painted, right? Oh, well, let's see. Uh, oil the fishing reels. Um, oh, uh, custom earplugs. So I got a jacked up ear and uh, I wanted to uh, acquire a custom set of earplugs. Uh, they were for uh, to keep water out of my ear, uh, for shooting guns, and then for loud equipment. I wear earplugs all the time, usually the foam kinds, just those disposables. I've got a big bag full of those things. No good for swimming. Uh, for shooting, they uh, I double up, right? So I've got the in-ear and then I've got the over-the-ear. and. Uh, I haven't tried these for shooting yet, uh, but they float. Very cool. Um, I, the, I think it's still debatable about whether or not they're everything I wanted. Um, this goes inside your ear canal, and it was trimmed a little bit. I think it's trimmed a little too much. I wish it went further in, but 100 bucks for these things. I went over to the ear, nose, and throat guy uh, and had his audiologist do that. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, you can get them cheaper online, but I think you take a risk in terms of fit, finish, you know, work, working, do they work, you know, that kind of stuff. So I went and popped for the extra money and just went over and had the audio. I'll just do it. So uh, very cool. I uh, still need to test them for uh, for shooting those. So, okay, we're going to look at the glass block windows today. And I did some research before we actually got started. Uh, last week, Evan and I worked on a strange project. We replaced the air conditioning system in his 2014 Chevy pickup truck. Uh, the fact that we had to do that wasn't that old. Um, it's kind of strange, right? But the way it died, and I'll throw a picture up right here, is the compressor has this big crack in it, and it just spewed out all this oil while he was driving, actually left leaving my house a, a little while back. And um, the belt uh, completely melted through because the pulley and the compressor stopped turning. Uh, so we ended up having to replace all these components, but I've not talked to anybody that had a compressor that's actually ever done that on a truck, or it's not readily available to us, right? 
very much the same with regards to installing glass block. If you were to go out and do installation searches for this, you'll find guys putting it in like basement windows. It's, it's old school, but now it's become a new school and a little more popular and so forth. And that's kind of where our, our heads are at as far as design is concerned. Um, but they're using uh, concrete, right, or mortar or some kind of a concrete product in order to get these things to stick. And um, what I want to do is focus in on that because there's not a lot of information available. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And we have sort of the pseudo, you know, interior, exterior installation. This one is purely for looks, right? I mean, this is just going to block the, the shower from the vanity. So that's, that's a sort of its own little project. And then we've got the exterior one up here. And we'll get into that a little bit more and, and talk about it. So last night I reframed uh, all this stuff and brought the uh, framing up to the correct height for the window. So that's done. Uh, Evan's on his way over and we are going to set this window into the space here and I tore the window out last night and the house was essentially built around this window that thing that thing came out like a bad tooth and I don't mean that in a good way uh, that was really tough there's a flange that had been completely covered up by brick and maybe if you're a window installer you uh you know where these are or maybe have an idea of where they are uh, i didn't know right and i just really struggled with it it just it just was a big problem to get that window out um, but it's out now and we're going to lift another glass block window in here probably first a dry fit <clears throat> and then you know and then start talking about shimming and leveling and uh caulking and you know these things so we'll see how it goes all coming back yeah like what 50 40s and 50s 50s and 60s i'm not sure somewhere right here All right, so in my shop right now, it's 103, and then outside exterior wall in the shade is 105. It is a brutal summer out here. I have a lot of attic work to do, and I'm going to have to plan every bit of that around the weather, the, the specifically the temperature, right? I have to do this. Um, we're at, what, mid-August, and it's just no sign of letting up here. So let's go take a look from the exterior what the window actually looks like, and I'll do more detail as I start to build it out because it's uh, completely uh, covered up now with that uh, piece of quarter inch uh, Luan. All right, there you have it. Uh, it's nothing pretty to look at. The new frame is uh, roughly right about here where this pencil line is and then the window is up. So this is gonna have to be filled. So I don't wanna take that down until I'm absolutely ready to do that. So one of the things we did when we were getting started was is that we created sort of this lattice work that, that ran from the uh, trim work up at the top of the house all the way down and anchored into the dirt with these stakes. So we had these two by fours swung up 
and they were screwed in like this and uh, of course it's all temporary and then we did a couple of cross members you know across here just so that window we were absolutely positive that that window wouldn't come falling out and uh, you know land out here in the yard and god knows what would have happened had that occurred so uh, that's how we did it i've got another one down there right we swung that up and then there, there's all of our cross bracing um, and we were relatively uh um, okay with our plan and the fact that we would lose control of this window should anything go wrong. The exterior is finished out in rough cedar uh, with a fresh paint job on it. And I'm going to echo that look down here, right? I'm going to do this, maybe do some moldings or something along those lines to, you know, neaten it up, pretty it up, and make it look like it, it's been that way uh, from the start. So that's the plan. Got a little bit of mess there to clean up. Uh, I was... I was on the... Uh, exterior last night when we were putting it in Evan was on the interior and he was sort of able to keep that steady without dumping that thing out the window right which is a real possibility I just want to make sure you're aware of that if you're ever going to try and uh, deal with this heavy glass block uh, the pre-assembled stuff so yeah warm out here I've been out here five minutes already breaking a sweat and uh, I'm gonna go in and work on that caulk job right here. See so if I can get those windows uh, plumb and level and, um, and set in place, uh, at least for the time being. So a funny thing happened this morning. It actually rained. Yesterday's temperature was this. Today, it's this temperature. And I am not ready to go in the attic to do this electrical work. I can't believe it. What a missed opportunity. I mean, it just never, the temperature's never like this in midsummer. So, opportunity lost. We go on with doing other stuff.
out here this morning uh, and into this early afternoon working on the uh, final woodwork for the bathroom window, the exterior. And uh, I did actually run into a problem that I did not anticipate, but I'll show you how I dealt with it. Um, I just put in all the caulk, and we'll take a look here. And um, most of the caulk, I haven't done around the window. I wanna put in some uh, masking tape, right? Uh, the white stuff is going to turn clear. Uh, that's that DAP stuff I mentioned. I think I mentioned it in another video, but I love that stuff, right? I mean, it, it covers a multitude of sins, and, um, you know, it's just an amazing product. I love it. It's uh, water-soluble, too, so it washes right off your hand. But given the choice, what I would have done is not bring this window up so high. It needs to come down a little bit, and the reason why that is is because if I put this piece of molding right up against the glass, I'm afraid it's gonna show through, right? So what I did was I beveled that. And so there's almost just this tiny little line actually touching the glass and helping to hold the window in. And it doesn't go flush. So if it went flush like this, I was afraid it would show, right? Um, so that's how I dealt with it. I don't know if it's a good way to do it, but you can't see it from either side. Uh, so mission accomplished there. And you know, it's gonna be, tough to get up in there you know and caulk that through and I don't want the caulk to show and you know all this mess I don't want all that mess all over the glass either um, but yeah you know if you ever having trouble with uh, caulk and you know it's just not behaving right man just chase your bead with a, a little bit of water on your finger right it, it's amazing I think I showed that just briefly in the uh, the bay window skinning video um <clears throat> i had a lot of caulk on that one man that was a big window to do right and it had this rough cedar all over it so, you know hey i'd throw this in the lake and you know go for a paddle with it right i think it'll hold water uh i beveled uh actually it's like a more like a drip edge right here so this is at a i don't know i guess a 10 or 15 degree uh bevel here as well as the sill down here i didn't need to put this 45 on here but i thought it gave it a more of a finished look so Ran that through the saw and got rid of that. And uh, yeah, looking good, right? So just now I'm just gonna do the perimeter of the glass and I'm gonna call this done. Then with the cedar, I have to prime it and then I'll add the final house color. And, uh, and this thing will be done, right? Looks good, we, we, we're pleased, we like this. But you know, a few odd adjustments that I would have uh, taken care of early on had I thought it through to that extent. In the next video, we're probably going to be talking about installing uh, or actually doing some of the final wiring. Um, I've run most of the cable, uh, not all of it. Uh, we'll see. We're, 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 things are pending. Um, we're not going into debt on this project, right? We're over 4000 bucks here. So we had actually had to slow things down a little bit because a lot of money was going out, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't being maybe as replenished as fast as we would like. Uh, so we intentionally slowed things down. That all being said, uh, we've got a uh, ceiling fan to install in the toilet shower area, and that uh, that guy will go up into the ceiling. It has this really clean look. That's probably the biggest selling point so far for me anyway. Yeah, it pulls air and all that, but uh, it really was important that we don't have a lot of louvers. I don't want a lot of places that catch dust uh, so forth. Add to that is a theory that uh, made by the same people. So this is a roof vent. I am not going to plunge a hole through our roof. I'm not going to do that. Uh, it comes in two different styles, I guess you might say. You've got a roof vent and you've got a wall. The wall had potential, but what I want to do is I want to connect this apparatus to the eave um, outside of the new glass block window. The problem with the Walmart is it goes vertical, the wall mount is it goes vertical, and then there's this flapper that, that goes like this. So if I hang it like this, which is what I want to do, it just fell open. So that's not going to work. So what I'm hoping is, is that the roof vent will look good, work somehow, some way, I don't really know. Uh, these two things together were uh, 100 bucks, uh, 80 for the fan. Another 20-25, you know, for that piece. So we'll see how it goes. Here's a nice shot of me getting shocked by the GFCI in the non-OSHA approved work space that I've created here. And, uh, you know, it woke me up a little bit. You know, keeps me keeps me up. 
Okay, in this section, I'm just bitter. I, you know, there's there's no two ways about that. Um, let the person who's never spoken ill about their neighbor cast the first stone. My neighbor's always over here asking for advice, and I give him good advice, right? How to fix it, right? Cars, house, the whole thing. He never does not one single thing that I tell him to do, not one. Guess what my answer to him next time is gonna be? Dude, you are So a couple years ago, he comes over, he says, hey, uh, I got a closet door that sticks. And I said, yeah, ours will do that from time to time. You know, this was several years ago. I said, we're in the middle of a drought. As soon as it starts to rain again, everything will move back into place and you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, and he, he'll, remember I try to explain to him anything? You ever seen a dog do that really cute thing where they tilt their head, his eyes glass over, right? That's during the explanation as to what's going on, he kind of tilts his head, like this. It's this blank look on his face with his weed whip and his car and his drywall that's coming down in his garage. And next thing you know, you got 10 guys out here doing a $10,000 job jacking up that uh, foundation on his house to fix a sticking closet door. <laughs>